work and learn. Meet light, meet max. Sakriya karagani mata my SLT app kate log winna. Work and learn. Meet light, meet max. Sakriya karagani mata my SLT app kate log winna. Hagan rahate na na was self excel then comfort premium sundar samagin. On 1st and 9th tonight, this Wednesday, the 23rd of November, 2022. No change. President Ranil Vikramasinghe says he will not allow another struggle to change the government. Calls on all parties in parliament to discuss a lasting solution to the ethnic issue. Shall we all get together to resolve this issue only? To resolve the issue, the ethnic issue, how we bring, how we are going to live well, children under one mother. So, Lakshman, will you all agree? not interchangeable. The role of the central bank and the government are not interchangeable and do not overlap each other, says CBSL Governor. People interpret this as parliament has the authority over all finances. No, parliament has authority over only on the public finance. New direction. Emirates to add an additional daily direct flight between Dubai and Colombo. While Sri Lankan Airlines plans to increase the number of flights to key destinations. As fast as we can get aircraft, we can increase capacity and increase tourism at the moment. From Adhaderana, this is Adhaderana First at Nine with Andrew Bernard. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. A very good evening and welcome to Adhaderana 24's English News. I'm Andrew Bernard. Now, President Ranil Vikram Singhal told Parliament today that he would not dissolve the House until the country achieves stability and that he will not allow another struggle to change the government. He also said that he would deploy the military and the use of emergency powers if deemed necessary. For the President, Vikram Singh called on all parties represented in Parliament to join a discussion in the week following the next budget vote to discuss a lasting solution to the ethnic issue in the country. More than 40 countries in the world today have a federal form of government. Those are the strongest countries in the world. More than 40% of the population of the world are in federal countries. We don't ask for something that is not found anywhere in the world. We are asking for something that is reasonable, that is practiced all around the globe, that will ensure that all our people will live with dignity and self-respect in this country. And we want the majority people in this country to understand that and accept that. After all, you are a preponderant majority. No one can shift that. It can't be bad for the Sinhala people because it was the Sinhala leaders who asked for it. It's true that over time, wrong messages have been communicated to the country and there are suspicions. Those must be allayed and we must resolve this in a just way. <laughs> Having said that, I think all that has to be known about the problems of this country, the ethnic problem or whatever you call it, from 1984 till now we have done it. There is nothing new to talk about. It is just to take and decide what is relevant and I think we can do it by next year, which is the, my aim, the 75th anniversary of independence. If you can't do it then, you may not have that Sri Lanka by 2048. So one is we have to build up confidence with the Tamil community. But we've also got to build up confidence with those people in the Singhala community who has reasonable concerns as to where it will lead. Shall we all get together to resolve this issue only? To resolve the issue, the ethnic issue, how we bring, how we are going to live well, children under one mother. So, Lakshman, will you all agree? Come, we are all on one. Right? We all think alike, no? It's, yeah. Yeah, we, we all want to have a settlement. Lakshman, give you a little bit. I'm going to say, 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 Hey, 
If you will call for the meeting of all parties as soon as we conclude the budget session yeah. before the 31st uh, of December. Uh, once we finish the budget on the 8th, the following week we'll have me all meet. Gota be Rajabak Samet to Bagi Raja, Alutu Yastava Kadana, Niti Kapitia Patirua. He committee Apite in Nagila Aradana Kirua. Api Adna last year, Nagota, I have to Padivia Kiwa, the Hatungi Viasta, Sanso, the Ne, Araksha Karanang in Nepagila. They want to abolish the 30th amendment. I'm going to protect 30. So, Pame Hotu Ayagi. Talking about the former president Chandrika Bandarnayaka Kumaratunga's proposals, that proposal was designed as union of regions. Now we are not worried about the terminology here. The constitutional terminology is not the issue. It's a question of sharing power both at the center and at the regions. Now if we can come to a collective understanding and put an end to this whole issue, and this is a golden opportunity for us to achieve that consensus. So let us not be misled by unnecessary controversy relating to different constitutional concepts, but the intention of devolving power is what is important. The meanwhile address in the Lalit Atulad Mudali commemorative oration, President Ranil Vikram Singh has said he certainly does not like to recreate a beggar nation and that Sri Lanka has to stand on its own. So we are not looking at the four years for the stabilization program and the modernization afterwards. It's running together. It's supposed to start next year, but we've already set it, getting the stabilization program and starting the structural reforms also at the same time. So this is where we are. And one wish on the structural reforms, because my friend, Honorable Charita Herat, raised it in the debate. Unfortunately, I was not in the chamber to reply. Yes, as a policy, we accept that the government should not be running businesses, full stop. Except one, that is the exception. We will stay in the financial sector. We will build the, uh, the banks we own and make it stronger. But it will be run like any good commercial bank and we don't mind giving a part of the minority shares to the deposit holders amongst others. It will bring some discipline in and what we did today, a digital economy. So it's a highly competitive economy which is export oriented, which has social protection, which is environmentally friendly and the characteristics is a blue-green economy. It doesn't apply to the government or today and a digital economy. So this is what we have. Now we have to go ahead. We can't be begging anymore. We can't be going to countries and asking for loans anymore. We have to learn to stand on our own feet. I certainly don't like to recreate a bigger nation. Now, the governor of the central bank, Dr. Nandalal Veera Singh, says that Sri Lankans have been led to believe that the central bank is responsible for changes in tax policies and concessions, when in fact the monetary authority's true mandate lies with its responsibility to maintain a stable monetary policy. The governor also went on to speak of the lack of awareness among the general public on the CBSL's true role. Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Dr. Nandalal Veera Singh, attended the 40th annual general meeting of the Apparel Exporters Association of Sri Lanka yesterday. When you listen to the budget debate, debate these days, a lot of allegation come to the Central Bank saying that Central Bank has, has contracted the economy and as a result people are suffering. People in Sri Lanka and even business in Sri Lanka think that anything that you need concession, you should go to the Central Bank and ask them for that. I mean, there's a reason for that. In the past, governors of the central bank have been talking about anything under the sun without the monetary policy. <laughs> <laughs> I am the person who is in charge of the monetary policy. I would not like to creep into someone else's authority in terms of fiscal policy. And, and likewise, I also don't like, as an independent central bank, fiscal authority dominating my policy making. But obviously, there has to be a coordination between fiscal and monetary policy in terms of overall macro stability. The authority to impose taxes, authority to control expenditure, final authority to public finance is the parliament, like in the country. That is why you see today budget was passed by the parliament that people who elected, they passed the budget. Public finance is only taxpayers' money. Country's finance is the monetary policy. But when, it's, when it comes to country finances, it is the central bank independent authority to determine what interest is for the whole country you are supposed to pay. But the exchange rate, you, what's the relevant appropriate exchange rate uh, for you to be able to do, not only for the government, but for the whole country, private sector, public, everyone. It's a bit of confusion in our constitution. There's a one clause say, parliament constitution, parliament is for public finance. People interpret this as a 
పార్లమెంట్ చేస్తే అథారిటీ ఓ ఓల్ ఫైనాన్సెస్ నో పార్లమెంట్ చేస్తే అథారిటీ ఓ ఓన్లీ ఆన్ ద పబ్లిక్ ఫైనాన్స్ ద వే ఐ సీ ద స్టేట్మెంట్స్ కమింగ్ ద వే పీపుల్ ఆర్ ఛాలెంజింగ్ సెంట్రల్ బ్యాంక్ ఇండిపెండెన్స్ ఆర్ బేసికలీ ఇస్ విత్ ల్యాక్ ఆఫ్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఆఫ్ ద రోల్ ఆఫ్ ద సెంట్రల్ బ్యాంక్ The Minister of Foreign Affairs Ali Sabri says Sri Lanka will not hesitate to work with Russia to import crude at a discounted rate given the current hike in market prices while adhering to all international laws and norms. Meanwhile, Minister Ali Sabri also rebuked what he termed as a western notion of the Chinese debt trap being the reason for Sri Lanka to undergo the current economic crisis. Was there any offer from Beijing when you went through that difficult period, difficult moment in your history? I hope that China will also step up in providing us debt restructuring assurances along with India so that we can go to the IMF and resolve the matter once and for all and get back to the recovery path. So it's important for all creditors and, and all investors that Sri Lanka recover and recover fast. The longer the debt is suspended, the longer it takes to recover. It's bad for all the creditors and investors. I think everybody understands. stands that including china have you reached out to new delhi for perhaps new set of support not really because i hope that right now the, our economy had uh, stabilized to a some extent so therefore we should be able to manage ourselves uh, and now right now we have reached out to indians and the rest of the world is not for aid zone and for any more loans and basically for investment how do you see relationship with beijing our relationship with beijing is very strong for a long long period of time we have, they have been our very close friend ours is a strong relationship basically it has been a commercial relationship an economic relationship where we have come and invested heavily in sri lanka during a very difficult period of time for us and during the 36 years of our conflict during the last few years uh, chinese supported us with the supply of arms to wade off the threat from one of the most ruthless terrorist organization ltte in order to bring back peace to our country so it is in that context that we have had a good relationship with them but sri lanka naturally uh, always follows that dynamic make neutral foreign policy where we would want everybody to be a friend to sri lanka and an enemy to none so that's our foreign policy that's our relationship so given this dynamism we would want to pursue the same thing many have been saying that the current economic crisis in sri lanka is also because of the chinese debt trap diplomacy will you agree with this assessment no i don't agree with that that's a western phrase we don't agree with that chinese have come and forcefully given their money to us it actually we have gone and sought their funds and they have respected that and invested in our country they are a biggest investor in our country so we don't agree with that frame or phrase naturally whether having taken the money with the we have put that into proper use or, or use where we can get returned is an issue for sri lankans how much has the will you be keen to buy a russian energy russian crude oil at a discounted rate going forward yes if there is a way to deal with the russian oil why not we want to at the kind of prices escalation it's it's unaffordable for us as our president once put it when the elephants fight it is the grass which get trampled you know small countries like us get disproportionately trampled by this kind of an issues which is taking place in the in the world so therefore uh, at the discounted prices without violating international norms and the laws uh, we would want to work with the russians because russia also we have had good relationship for a long period of time have you spoken to uh, russia on this matter regarding import of crude oil or regarding india as well uh, since india has been importing uh, russian crude oil have you suggested or spoken to the indian side over how this mechanism works uh, we have had uh, several rounds of discussions yes we are pursuing that options we are uh, we are keeping the option open uh, either directly or through india Now the government of Myanmar donated a consignment of urgently required essential medicines and medical supplies worth over 1.48 million US dollars to Sri Lanka. The consignment was officially handed over to the ambassador of Sri Lanka in Myanmar, Janaka Bandara, by the Union Health Minister of Myanmar, Dr. Thet Kiang Win, in a ceremony held at the Department of Medical Research in Yangon. The state prime minister of Myanmar granted this donation in response to a request made by ambassador Janaka Bandara at his credential ceremony on the 7th of June to 2022 the ambassador of sri lanka in yangon says that it will make arrangement to dispatch this consignment of medicines to the country as soon as possible So stay with us to find out what new plans the Sri Lankan Airlines has in store after it's able to get all its flights operational after this short commercial break. Big 
Welcome back. The Chief Executive Officer of Sri Lankan Airlines, Richard Natal, says they hope to increase the number of flights to several destinations including London, Singapore, Thailand and Malaysia once the airline is able to get all its 24 aircrafts into use next year. Addressing a media briefing today, you also said that it is essential to ensure that the airline meets market demand in order to attract a potential investor. We are hopeful that all of the flights will be full from the tourist destinations over the winter. At the moment, we're not in a position to increase frequencies because we don't have enough aircraft. We are, as is well documented, we are looking to expand. We're working to get approval from Cabinet to replace aircraft that are leaving or have left. We're also working with, with some of our suppliers. I mean, all airlines at the moment in the world are having problems getting engines back because everybody wants to do it at the same time and the, the engine companies don't have enough capacity. But we're hoping that by the middle of next year, we have 24 aircraft, but perhaps 19 of them are flying at the moment. There's always one or two in heavy maintenance, and then we've got about three on the ground because we need engines. We're hoping that we'll get that to 24 by the middle of next year, and then we'll continue to grow. So if you look at what that means for capacity, we would like to increase a little bit to London. Definitely Singapore, Thailand, and Malaysia should all be more than single flights a day, which is what they are at the moment. We have started flying to Sydney. We would like to increase capacity there. We would like to increase flights to Korea. As fast as we can get aircraft, we can increase capacity and increase tourism at the moment. Now, the reality is that as an airline, we should be you know, 35, 36 aircraft within a couple of years. And that allows us to do all the double dailies. It makes the connections much more robust. It allows us to bring more tourism. We have a couple more destinations we want to fly, uh, but it's more about increasing frequency to those big tourism destinations. The reality is that what we're paying on debt is unsustainable. So we're looking at this financial year to the end of March, we will be paying close to $100 million in servicing debt, which is getting close to 10% of our revenues. It's just it's a bit under. Now, we're in an industry where if you have a 5% profit margin, you're doing very well. So we might get away with it at the moment. Uh, it's still possible we will be fully profitable for the year. We're a bit under after the first six months, but given the problems the country had, you know, that's not surprising. We may be able to catch up. We'll see. It'll depend on the price of fuel. <coughs> but yields are not always going to be this high when everybody gets back to flying. And so the biggest challenge we have is that paying off that debt. If you have to pay off 100 and you've got 1,000, that's one thing. But if you're only earning 500 and you've got to pay off 100, that's impossible. So there are various ways out of it, but one is to grow as long as you're growing profitably, but we can't shrink. So, you know, if we're going to be sustainable and we're going to be attractive for an external investor, we need to at least maintain. Any investor that comes in they're not going to invest in something if they think it's going to shrink. They're only going to invest if it's going to grow. So as long as we're not doing anything that is crazy, as long as we're making sure that we meet the market demand and we're growing what we've got organically, that's what any investor would want us to do. Now, one of UA's flag carriers, Emirates, has announced plans to add an additional daily direct flight between Dubai and Colombo, starting from the 1st of December to cater to the seasonal increase in the demand for travel. The additional service operating as EK648 and EK649 will increase the number of daily flights between the two cities to three, including two direct flights and one operating via the Maldivian capital, Malé. Emirates' second daily flight will operate directly between Dubai and Colombo, except from the 16th till the 30th of December, when the service from Dubai to Colombo will stop over in Malé. From the 1st to the 15th of December, and from the 31st of December to the 26th of March, EK648 will depart Dubai at 4.10 p.m. daily and arrive in Colombo at 9.55 p.m. Flight EK4 648 rather will be routed via Malé from the 16th to the 30th of December and will during that time period depart Dubai at 10.30 a.m. and arrive in Malé at 2.45 p.m. It will then depart from Malé at 5.15 p.m. and arrive in Colombo at 7.15 p.m.
In the meantime, Sri Lankan shares closed firmer for a second session today, a day after the second reading of the Budget 2023 was passed in the Parliament. The All Share Price Index closed 2.2% high at 8,173.96, its highest since the 15th of November. The More Liquid Index S&P SL20 closed 2.4% higher at 2,513.57. The market witnessed a turnover of 1.5 billion rupees, half of this year's daily average turnover of 3 billion rupees. The market, meanwhile, saw a foreign inflow of 6.4 million rupees, extending the total foreign inflow to 18.3 billion rupees so far for this year. The SPI has fallen 4.9% so far in November after losing 13.4% in October. Richard Pierce, meanwhile, led the market rise with a 11% gain to close at 22.2 rupees a share. Expo Lanka, in the meantime, holdings rose to 6.5% to close at 147.7 rupees, while Haley's gained a 6.8% at 71.9 rupees. Now let's take a look at how the rupee traded against other major currencies in the world. That's all the news we have for this evening. Join us again tomorrow at the same time for more news. Until then, visit our website www.adhadarana.lk for more news. Have a pleasant evening. Good night. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adhadarana.lk.